For this stem bite, my wife and I are playing some tennis. Oh dear. Oh yeah, I got that. Ah! Oh! It turns out there's actually a lot of crazy physics in tennis. One of the first bits of physics is actually all about the racket itself. You've probably heard of the sweet spot of the racket. While the racket seems really rigid, it actually vibrates like a wave. Since your hand is holding the racket, that's a place we'd call the node. A place where the racket can't really vibrate at all. There's another node on the racket, which is right about here. We'd call that a dead spot. When you hit the ball there, you really feel it on your hand. The way the racket helps you hit the ball faster is if you hit the ball right at an anti-node. A place like this is the sweet spot because the racket can vibrate a lot at that location. The most important physics of tennis though has to do with spin. At the highest levels of professional tennis, the amount of spin you put on the ball is a differentiator between being the best in the world and being second best. So why does spin matter? There's two reasons it matters. When a ball is spinning, it changes how it moves through the air. A ball with top spin will kind of hook downward, so as soon as it passes over the net, it can sink. A ball with back spin will move up as it travels through the air, which can sometimes catch the other player by surprise. The second way that spin helps is when the ball actually bounces off the ground. If you have top spin on your ball, when it bounces, it'll stay really low to the ground, which makes it harder for the other person to hit it. When you put backspin on the ball, when it bounces, it stops dead in its tracks, which means the other player has to run up really fast to try to get it. Some of the coolest physics in tennis, though, comes when you think about how does the ball get its spin from the racket. The key is what's happening when the ball is touching the strings. If you have slippery strings, then the strings can slide along one another, like rubber bands when the ball hits that, it'll make the string slide down and then boing, bounce back up. That springing action of sliding down and bouncing back up can impart a ton of spin to the ball. In fact, in the 1970s, tennis players realized if they only used vertical strings, they called them spaghetti strings, then they could get tons more spin on the ball. The whole reason being that those strings could slide up and down easily when they didn't have the cross strings. As the technology of tennis continues to improve, players get better and better because they can spin the ball more than ever before. All right, you ready? Here it comes. Stand by.